seen a bunch of news recently come out when it comes to Xbox forward compatibility and like stuff we'll see at the showcase. I think this will be all brought up when it comes to like the Xbox, but there's the Activision Blizzard King of uh, Zenimax, whatever other studios that Microsoft bought <laughs> uh, showcase. <laughs> I wonder if they're still gonna be calling it Xbox or if they're just gonna like, I know it got branded like the Xbox, but there's the showcase, but now is it gonna just be like the half of the gaming market <laughs> showcase. <laughs> Recently, this uh, I saw this tweet from Insider Gaming, Tom Henderson's website, and he has a lot of really good information, a lot of credible stuff. But uh, it says that uh, Xbox has a new team focused on game preservation and forward compatibility. For those backing Team Green, one of the most diehard defensive points to bring up is Xbox's dedication to backwards compatibility and the availability of old games on modern platforms. Recently, news broke revealing that a new team was established at Xbox by Sarah Bond, who was made president of the brand last year to focus on that topic. Uh, an article come up from Windows Central say that team is dedicated to preserving games and ensuring forward compatibility existing across Xbox ecosystem wherever it may evolve to what look like next which is really great to hear because that's a big issue that's really been going recently been going on is just preservation of content we see this a lot of times when it comes to like disney plus they've been removing a ton of shows from their catalog that aren't even old from disney plus because i guess maybe make room for server space or something or if people are just not watching it to remove it but once it's gone if it's a disney plus show and there's no physical format it's just gone forever and you can never watch it, especially with the Xbox One release where there was no backwards compatibility for how popular the Xbox 360 was and the lack of amazing games that launched for the Xbox One did not have backwards compatibility. That question still lingers 11 years later. So you can see like the ripple effect of the Xbox One launch, which was just not good. <laughs> but uh, to kind of get back into the article saying, saying we need to go back saying Windows Central exclusively revealed a content detailed in a series of internal emails, which focused mainly on briefings is issued by Sarah Bond. One key tidbit to take away from the discussion was the creation of a fresh team dedicated to future proof digital game libraries across future hardware paradigms. That's awesome to hear. They might not implement it properly, but they do a lot of great things. Saying this quote here from Jess Corden formed a new team dedicated to game preservation important to all of us at Xbox and the industry itself. We are building on our strong history of delivering backwards compatibility to our players and we remain committed to bringing forward the amazing library of Xbox games for future generations of players to enjoy. Meaning, in the next generation of consoles, we will likely be able to, we will have backwards compatibility. That's what they're saying. They're future proofing their content to have a way for people to just be able to jump in and experience these games. Like, there are bold plans for Xbox to reach lofty heights in the coming years with the tech titan against or working on the biggest technological leap ever in a generation which was said by sarah bond during a recent podcast based update however looking to the future also includes bringing up the past which is a huge deal for long time gamers who want to play their games including retro ones in the same space and so i wonder if they can find a way to keep it like a sustainable way to where they can have your multiplayer servers stay live for a game while also not being too expensive for the amount of people that are playing because obviously there needs to be like enough players to support and reason give a reason why they have a live server that they're paying for for people to jump in and play but also it needs to be financially successful in a way moving full speed ahead on our next generation hardware focusing on delivering the biggest technological leap in a generation. Now, to me, that feels like it's empty words just because ever they said that with every single generation of consoles, like this is the biggest leap we've ever made. This is incredible. Oh my God, you'll never want to play anything else any other way because that's how amazing this console is. Like that's just marketing. They'll say that every single time that like their product is the best thing ever to get you hyped, to keep you interested, to make you want to jump in and buy into it right xbox is still recovering from the atrocities that happened with the launch of the xbox one i mean phil spencer even agreed to this that like xbox is just gonna be stuck in third place xbox has always been more popular within the u.s market and like uk but then outside of the united states and north america it's all playstation and nintendo and nintendo is like up here and then you got like playstation xbox it's like it's like that like if you don't know nintendo crushes it worldwide everything they do it's just like 
they're making the insane amount of sales. I mean, they definitely still have a market within the gaming industry to justify, I think, an Xbox creation. They might think of had to rethink of like how they create an Xbox. You know what I mean, here I'm thinking Nintendo was third for years. No, Nintendo smashes in sales. Oh my God. They're like Xbox and PlayStation combined and then some. Nintendo is massive. Nintendo has always gone with like that more social, uh, you know, casual gaming audience where like PlayStation and Xbox have always focused on like the, the hardcore gamer audience. But that's great to see when it comes to like the forward thinking compatibility that Xbox is doing. Game preservation is very much a thing. The reason why it's an issue now is because we pretty much fully left the physical copy world behind. Like obviously, yeah, physical, physical copies are still out there, right? But I can't tell you the last time I bought a physical copy of a game. It might be Red Dead Redemption 2. But game preservation nowadays is huge because once those servers are offline, you can't interact with that game anymore. Before, you could just pop in that disc, pop in that cartridge, and you could play the game just like you did back when you first got it. Now things have changed where now game preservation is a legitimate issue. The emphasis on live service, uh, the emphasis on digital distribution, that once online servers are gone, you can't play that game anymore. Even though a lot of people like to hate on Halo Infinite, I'll use Halo Infinite as an example. I'm sure the majority of people got that game digitally. And what if 343 was like, okay, we're gonna take down the servers for Infinite. You just can't play the live service that you put countless hundreds of hours into. Can't play it anymore. You can only play campaign. So all you'd be left with just like a single player experience of Halo Infinite, which is fun. I love the single player Infinite, but that's a huge part of the game. Just basically not playable anymore. Uh, we also got some information about what we could see for the X Xbox showcase coming in here in June, which is going to be a very interesting Xbox showcase as now we have that purchase of Activision Blizzard King. You know, Xbox is going to come out hitting hard with those IEPs when it comes to showcasing why you need to buy into the Xbox ecosystem. My hopes, the next Call of Duty being on Game Pass. I mean, we can see that happen. We already have Diablo 4 on Game Pass. Call of Duty Black Ops Gold 4 to be featured at Xbox Showcase in June. If you guys have not been following the Call of Duty leaks, this is rumored to be the next Call of Duty game is Black Ops Gulf War. And you know they're gonna be showing Call of Duty within the uh, Xbox Showcase. There's been a wild 24 hours for Xbox Showcase rumors. Uh, now that Tom Warren at The Verge is reporting uh, that this year's Call of Duty title, Black Ops Gold 4, will be featured at this year's Xbox Showcase. I mean, we can pretty much assume that now at this point, right? Inside, Insider Gaming can corroborate that this is the plan, but the game is currently set to be revealed prior to the showcase in a more traditional fashion and outside of Warzone. It's understood that Black Ops Gold 4 will be revealed prior to Summer Games Fest in June, the showcase will feature some form of a deep dive into the game, presumably a campaign mission walkthrough if they go traditional. They could then hear more about the multiplayer offerings around August and zombies soon after that. Call of Duty Black Ops Gold 4 is set to be released in October, which is actually a little bit earlier than most Call of Duty releases. But yeah, like this, this uh, assuming that, and probably like this was like the plan all along, right? When it comes to the reveal of the game and the things are already set in motion, but like, six months in advance when it comes to that kind of stuff so i can see why they go a little more traditional just kind of revealing this at this time and just kind of xbox really like you know it's not mess it up you guys always nail it when it comes to the promotions of your game so we'll let you just do your thing on that so as previously reported insider gaming understands that this year's call of duty tile will be an open world campaign developed by raven software multiplayer and zombies will be handled by treyarch games raven software running the open world campaign we know how well those open world missions happen in one over three not that great. But of course, Modern Warfare 3 had like no time to do to make that game. I think they made the entirety of Modern Warfare 3 in like a year and a half, from according to reports. And so I can see why the game was so lackluster in campaign. With this more open world style gameplay, uh, it could be good. Modern Warfare 3's campaign was like what Halo 5's campaign was to that franchise. Like Modern Warfare 3's campaign was not good. There was really no moments within that game where I'm like, oh, I want to play through this again. I mean, we'll definitely cover it here on the channel whenever the Xbox showcase happens. Uh, so make sure you subscribe, people. Uh, things are just looking good for Xbox, man. But, you know, Xbox has spent a lot of money to make sure things look good. Rumors are that next Gears of War game is going to get announced at the Xbox showcase as well. This is uh, reported here from The Verge. Microsoft is in the middle of planning the next big Xbox showcase. I understand that is set to take place on Sunday, June 9th. And Microsoft is currently planning to announce a new Gears of War game at the show. A Gears uh, announcement won't be the only new Xbox game at the show which will also include release dates for upcoming Xbox games like Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 
Avowed, Indiana Jones and the Great Circle, and of course the new Call of Duty that is set to debut later this year. So they might give us the release date for the Xbox showcase, but for Flight Sim, dude, I love myself some Flight Sim. Uh, Avowed looks kind of cool. It'll definitely catch my attention. I'll definitely play it on Game Pass for sure. Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. I think I feel like I need to see more about Indiana Jones before I get hyped about it. Uh, from what I saw from the trailer, like I was like, yeah, it looked pretty good. But new Gears game, it definitely had my attention. I think the main thing with like the Gears franchise, why I, I need, I never finished four and I never finished. Five. I think it's maybe it was like I never, I didn't really get invested with the characters. Like even though they were Marcus Phoenix, I think is in both of them. But he's you know he's just like the old man tagging along kind of thing, kind of almost like the uh, kind of like how Star Wars brought back the old cast. Like yeah, they were in there, but they're not really like the main characters. I think I stopped playing Gears' campaign once I got to like that open world section. I think just like Gears needs like some kind of like refresh or something. There is still something there with that franchise that people are definitely would get interested. Like you hear a gear, new Gears game, people get excited about it. Then you go in the jump in and play it and you might play it for like a month and you just completely drop it. I feel like the Gears game franchise needs some kind of shot in the arm to kind of get people excited about it, which would most likely piss off a lot of classic fans. But that's like, how many classic gears fans are there though i think it'd keep like that cover based shooter stuff but then you do it in a way so that it's not like so rigid or so classic you know expand upon it rather than having to just be the exact same thing i mean i mainly play gear the gears franchise for the campaigns anyways and i think also that like that that what what used to be over the top when it came to gears doesn't really feel that over the top anymore like the, ch the, the chainsaw assault rifle is amazing still like it's it will never get old slicing enemies in half I mean, look at this. Look at, look at, okay, let me just show you this right here. Get myself one of these badass Lancer replicas. This is badass. This looks amazing. Like, I don't care who you are, what games you like. How does that not look amazing? Honestly, I have like a new Halo game to re reveal, which I really doubt they'll have a new Halo game to be revealed. But I mean, as a Halo creator and fan, obviously I would love to see that. But I think we're too early in that development. I know that pre production started back in 2022 so we're still a ways away from that but yeah i'm definitely excited about the next xbox showcase we'll definitely cover it on the channel here you know live stream a reaction about it and all that good stuff but until then we just have to wait until june i'm sure as we get closer we'll hear some more details more leaks rumors and all that good stuff coming with xbox 